Tim, tell me, what brought you to Japan in the first place? Ah, it was your classic student who was determined to go somewhere on somebody else's dime for free. So in 1986, I was graduating from school and looked in the big fellowship book that they had in college and said, okay, where can I go that somebody's actually going to pay for my trip and it'll be somewhat different. And at that time, Nico Securities was trying to expand their um, foreign participation in uh, investment banking activity and they had a fellowship program where they were going to have 20 American students come over for the summer. So I said, well, I know nothing about Japan, I know nothing about investment banking, so sounds like that'll be fun. So I ended up coming over and catching the tail end of the bubble era in 1986 um, and for three years before got that call from my mother saying, weren't you going to go to law school at some point in your life? But uh, I came back. So yeah, it was single, it was the bubble era and uh, late 80s, so that's my first trip here. I ended up doing the Harvard JD MBA and uh, the business school requirement is that you have to have some work experience and so after working in investment banking for three years I thought well let me add on an MBA to the JD which means it takes four years so it was going back to my alma mater I was in Harvard undergraduate um, but to go back there as a graduate student for four years. What type of law do you practice? I'm a corporate lawyer generally but I specialize in mergers and acquisitions and that's been just a terrific field to be in uh, over the last few years because I think the Japanese economy finally got to the point where they realized that they needed a real outside shock to get the system going again and so many Japanese clients have now been open to foreign investment and we've been able to come up with a lot more creative ways to put Japanese and foreign companies together um, whether it's Japanese management or using some foreign management coming in so over the last three years we've seen a real growth in that practice now you work for Freshfield. Tell me a little bit about Freshfield. Sure. Freshfields is uh, well, it's actually a very old uh, law firm. It is 270 years old. Uh, originally founded in 1743, and uh, Freshfields originally was founded in London, and the first partner was the partner to the Bank of England. And since then, um, mainly in the UK up until maybe the early 1980s, when English law firms realized that the world was going to expand, and especially Europe with European integration, that it was critical for them to offer a service to their um, clients that expanded across Europe. And so they started in Europe and then they also moved out into Asia. And now Freshfields is a firm of 2,500 lawyers, um, over 500 partners in 27 countries. Um, I came five and a half years ago. At that time our office was just eight lawyers here in Tokyo. And Freshfields had started an experiment um, that was quite ahead of the rest of the market here. And that is to merge Japanese law practice with an international law practice. And previously I had been in Japan with just a New York law practice and I was very anxious to see what would happen if you got to work alongside Japanese Bengoshi to provide a complete international practice. And so they asked me to come uh, basically to help jumpstart the corporate part of that practice. And uh, the practice has now gone from eight lawyers to about 35 lawyers here in Japan. Um, and during that time I worked up towards the partnership three years ago. There's something unique about that that I want you to share with us. Um, well, let's see, uh, well, a couple of mini firsts, but one that's sort of personally uh, important to me. Um, the mini first was that I was the first uh, associate promoted from within the Tokyo office. This office had been uh, amalgamation of people coming from the London office as well as uh, recruiting basically star Japanese lawyers and English lawyers to be partner. Um, but in the firm, I would think that I'm the first 
first African American partner in this long history uh, law firm, so that was actually kind of a, a personal pride for me. I am married, I have two children, I'm married to a lawyer, and we met in law school. In fact, uh, we met at a law school sushi party, of all things. Um, I had come back um, from Japan and was, of course, very interested in keeping in touch with Japanese lawyers and Japanese culture while I was at Cambridge. And my wife also was at that sushi party. She had gone and taught English in Japan for a year, so she was also in the same type of interest. So it was kind of a match made in heaven, uh, two lawyers who happened to be interested in Japan. And we've come over here and we have two children now who are eight and six years old. And um, both of them started out in the Japanese daycare system, so their Japanese is perfect. In fact, uh, they're usually making fun of how bad my accent is in Japanese. Your wife is Japanese as well, right? Sure. Um, her, um, her father is African American and her mother is Japanese. And it's quite interesting because Yvette is the youngest of four children, so she grew up pretty much just a New Jersey girl. Um, her mother taught, spoke only in English to the kids, and she knew about her mother's history, but she didn't really know about it in depth. And it was only after going to college and studying East Asian studies that she um, picked up the Japanese language and slowly started speaking more Japanese to her mother. And now that we've been living over here in Japan, her mother has come um, over several times to visit and has reunited with her family. Um, so it's been terrific. Yvette always tells a story about how she never really knew her mother had a great sense of humor until she could start speaking Japanese. But of course, language is the subtlety of humor is so important. How much longer do you think you'll be living in Japan, Tim? Well, we've been here this tour about five and a half years, and I would think that pretty soon we'll transition back to New York. It might be the right time for the kids as well. Um, but I know that I will always have a connection back to Japan, and fortunately Freshfields has an office in New York and spent some time there, but may come back uh, to Tokyo. It's obvious that you're fit, Tim. How do you stay that way? Oh, well, I, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I think this obviousness is, is, is kind of a recent phenomenon. Some of, I've always loved sports, um, and I played a lot of tennis uh, in college. But um, coming to Japan has just been fantastic for my health, um, because I guess that old adage really is true, that you, you have to both eat well as well as you know have a good physical routine. So um, Japanese food is just very healthy and good for you, so that's helped to shave off several pounds. Um, but then I do try to get to uh, the gym and work out a few times a week, and unfortunately I've actually been able to play tennis uh, in Tokyo at least a couple times a week. And I understand that you have some trophies in tennis. <laughs> well. Uh, there's a, a tennis club called the Tokyo Lawn Tennis Club, uh, which is a great club because um, part of its charter is to have a membership that's about 50% international and 50% Japanese. And it's been able to attract some of the best tennis players in Japan. A lot of former Davis Cup players come and play there. Um, and because of that high level of players, uh, there is an A group and a B group. Um, that gets to compete and in the B tournament um, I was able to win a singles trophy and a doubles trophy so I was quite happy about that but the problem is once you win the B trophy they don't let you play B anymore you go straight to the A tournament <laughs> and in the A tournament I'm struggling. <laughs> now there's a question I ask everyone at the end of an interview and that is what do you see as success in Japan? I think success in Japan is really jumping in with both feet here because it's easy to have your life in Japan and be on the outside of it. So you can enjoy the outside perimeter, which is a very polite um, group of people to work with, a very clean and safe place for your family to go to work, and uh, a place that has terrific number of restaurants, etc. But if you're really going to be successful here, it is jumping in with both feet, which means doing things a bit more in the hard way. Um, having our kids in the Japanese school system, for example, has meant that we've had to come 
conform in some ways to figure out how to go about the routines to make our children feel comfortable in that school system. And that has meant reading all of the various uh, bits of paper that come home uh, to home in Japanese, um, getting my son uh, what's called a randosero, which is that cool backpack that little Japanese kids get to wear. Um, and it's also meant doing things in a different format and routine that requires a lot more patience. But when you do that, you do feel particularly successful. And that's on the home front, but I've tried to translate that also with my clients to really get down and understand their businesses, the way that they approach how they do it, so that when there is a merger with a foreign party, I can start appreciating what may be their misgivings or concerns uh, when they do that merger. I really had a wonderful interview with Tim Wilkins first African-American partner at Freshfields, a company that's over 260 plus years old. I hope you enjoy watching this segment of Success in Japan as much as I did in giving it. Thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you again in another fantastic Lance Lee's Success in Japan.